Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Among Stouts. If you're new here, my name is Samantha and I'm a new homeschooling stay-at-home mom to four kiddos. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys our CC year in review. So if you're new here, this has actually been our first year of homeschooling. So as you would expect, it was also our first year in Classical Conversations or CC. And um, I just wanted to get on here and talk to you guys about uh, the different components that we participated in in CC and whether or not it is something that we are going to continue with moving forward. So if you guys like these kinds of videos, please go ahead and hit that like button. And also, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit subscribe. I'd love to have you here as a part of my community. And I also wanted to say at the beginning of this year, I told you guys that I was getting off of um, social media other than YouTube. And so I had deactivated my Facebook, Instagram, all of those things. Um, but recently I have reactivated my Instagram and I'm being more, um, and I'm starting to post more things on there of that sort. So if you guys are wanting to follow me and my family around in the day to day or the days that I do post, uh, go ahead and find me on Instagram. And so if you guys are interested in following me over at Instagram, I have um, my Instagram linked in the description box, but it is among.stouts. So go ahead and head over there and follow me if you aren't already. I'd love to have you guys over there as well. So now without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. So like I mentioned already, it was our very first year in CC, also our first full year of homeschooling. Um, if you're new, you may not know that I pulled my kids out of public school last year, um, and it was it actually happened pre like a couple of months before COVID, and it, I actually pulled them out a couple of months before COVID. So right after Christmas break, my kids went to school that first week in January, which was like a short week. I, th I believe they only went to school for three days that week, but basically so that they could turn in all of their stuff, get all of their things, um, I withdrew them, and then after that first week after the new year. Um, of 2020 we pulled them out and that's whenever we had made the decision that we were going to homeschool and so we just didn't see the need to go ahead and continue on with the school year um, with the public school year that year which because of everything that happened as we all know with 2020 and schools closing down and things of that sort um, it ended up being a really good decision for us and it worked out really nicely the way that it did for us since we had already made that decision and then um it, it made the transition a little bit easier for my kids because then cut um, whenever March hit, nobody was at school anymore, so they couldn't. They really didn't have to miss anything because they weren't missing out with everyone else at home too. So I actually heard about um, classical conversations from a friend that I met in my neighborhood. So sorry if you guys hear my two-year-old out there crying. Um, he's out there with my husband, so daddy's out there, big kids are out there. Uh, they're trying to get breakfast going and he's being a little impatient about breakfast. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. I met a friend in um, our neighborhood. We were, we were still pretty new here. We'd only been living in the neighborhood for about six months at the time. And in February, there was a, um, in our Facebook neighborhood page, I saw that there was a women's Bible study that is hosted here um, with fellow neighbors. And so I went ahead and joined that. And uh, since I had pulled my kids out, I met another homeschooling mom there and she was a part of uh, Classical Conversations. So after we talked about it, I went and I did more research and I looked it up and it just didn't seem like the, the thing that was for me um, with like the Latin and like the, um, the memory work and things like that. One of the reasons why I wanted to pull my kids out a public school was so that we had more flexibility and more choice in our curriculum so with CC already having like a structure it didn't seem like something that I was looking for initially so I kind of like looked into it and then just decided that it wasn't for us fast forward to the summertime and we were hanging out at the pool and uh, she brought it up again she's like at least just go to the informational and see like talk to people who have done it meet the director and just go and see for yourself if it's something that you're interested in uh, not just go based off of what you're seeing online she's like because honestly you can make it like you can make cc as much as you want to or just as little as you want to and it can just be something added to your homeschool rather than being your homeschool so i was like okay uh i will go ahead and go to this informational and check it out so i did that uh i think it was at the i think it was in june 
yeah, it was in June. So I went and I did that in June and I laughed like after talking to the director and seeing like inside the foundation's guide and just hearing more about it. I, I, I really truly feel like you have to talk to someone who has been in it for a while. So my friend had a kindergartner and it was her first year in CC. So she was trying her best to like give me all the details, but she was still new at it herself. Um, but once I was able to talk to the director, look in the, uh, look in the foundations guide, look at all the essential stuff and like just wrap my head around, wrap my brain around what all I was like taking in. <clears throat> I was a lot more interested and what really made me interested was the community aspect of it because those last, that last part of the school year for 2020, like those last six months or so, or four or five months or so where we did homeschool at home or like we, we took a huge break. We didn't do a whole lot, but it was still hard for all of us. To, while I missed my kids and I really wanted them home, transitioning into having them home all the time when I have always either, my kids had always been in public school when school started or I was working outside the home and so they, they did childcare. So we were never really all at home together like that. And once uh, COVID hit, it was my husband, me, and all of my kids. So things just kind of got overwhelming and I, I like wasn't really sure about what to do. And I just knew that we needed something. And after talking to them, I realized it was community. I realized that there was no way I was going to be successful in our homeschool journey if I tried to go at our first full year alone. So the community aspect is what really drew me in. Uh, our particular CC meets on Fridays. Uh, the issue that we were having was finding a church to host us at the time just because of everything going on. We didn't know if we were going to do it out of homes or what was going to happen. And one of uh, the families that joined around the same time that I did actually owns a property with a church and a camp on it. So they were so awesome to host us there. And it everything just worked out really nicely. So that's how I got into CC. And um, yeah, after I left that informational, I was pretty much sold on it. So then it was just talking about it with my husband. And so we looked over all the stuff together. We read um, A Well-Trained Mind and just looked more into the classical teaching method. And because we I, I was kind of really sold on the Charlotte Mason approach. But um, once I looked more into the classical approach, I really liked that a lot too. So then I just knew that I wasn't going to be the, like our homeschool wasn't be one, wasn't going to be one that was strictly one approach. So we kind of do a little bit of Charlotte Mason, a little bit of traditional and a whole lot of classical. Um, that's kind of what, oh, and a whole lot of unit study. We love unit studies around here. So we do a little bit of everything and it kind of just works for us that way. Um, I will say that we used science, the CC science 100%. We didn't add in any extra science this year outside of CC. Um, and I'm, I think we might add a little bit more in this year. Uh, what I really loved about CC is they incorporate experiments. And as much as I want to be that mom that does tons and tons of experiments at home, I, you know, it's just not me. And uh, I think it's totally okay and fine to not be uh, the experiment crafty mom. I think that's, it's not my strong suit. So that's where CC, um, has really helped me out with the art and the music and the science experiments. Uh, so my kids get that on Fridays whenever we're going. And if we need to do any extra at home, I love having a subscription to KiwiCo because that also keeps their little, um, hands-on that also keeps some hands-on components for them at home and they get one of those every month and they just use that throughout the month. Um, they can usually build those in an afternoon, but then they have it to play with for um, the month before it either falls apart or the two-year-old gets to it. Um, so there's that. But this is the foundations guide and I actually just bought mine used from, from a family who I think they graduated out of uh, CC and like went into challenge and so there was a foundations guide that she had and it was already all tabbed and so I just went ahead and bought it from her and um, yeah it worked really nicely so what I like to do um, what I was doing at the beginning of the year was every week I would go through and I would put all of our memory work on the whiteboard 
Uh, but once they started building a house next door and my kids were way too distracted by that, we just weren't doing school up there anymore. So we have been using the app. I purchased the CC Cycle 3 app and we just do our memory work through the videos on there. I also purchased the, um, uh, the songs on iTunes and so we do the songs on there with we do the CC cycle three songs on there and then we did the CC cycle three foundations and that was how we did our memory work the second part of the school year because the first part they weren't building next door on this side over here where our homeschool room is um so but now that house is up it's done and I think whenever we go back into CC in the fall um we're going into cycle one now and uh we'll be back up in our homeschool room and I'll probably just go back to putting stuff up on the whiteboard so foundations and then I had one kiddo in essentials and this was the essentials guide here and again this is something that I purchased from a family who was no longer in essentials anymore and it was nice because it was already all in this binder and all of the pages were um, in protectors so I didn't have to do any of the work to make this work now if you are interested in joining CC now there is going to be a new essentials guide coming out um, and whenever they go find them on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram and follow them, because as soon as they get their new essentials guide, um, in stock, like in their warehouse, they're going to put it up for sale and it's only going to be $75 for, I think like a week, a week to two weeks before it goes up to the normal price of $95. So I am definitely going to go ahead and buy it on sale since I had already purchased this. I don't love that I'm having to buy a whole nother guide, but I think that it's, it's definitely like you can use the old one or the new one but I think that because I did not like this I it, I mean it's a beast I never want it to look in here it's overwhelming I think that I'm going to go ahead and start fresh with the new guide um, it's separated out more it's tabbed and I think it's just going to work so much better as for all of us who um, are overwhelmed by this thing and so this is the grammar part of essentials or of the essentials level in CC and then for or the language arts portion and so because this is like massive my son he would work on like looking through the charts and I didn't I didn't force him to like write them out and try to memorize everything on there he naturally did it on his own like and it, from looking at the charts for having to do sentences and stuff like that he was starting to pick it up and memorize it so um, I think with my daughter, I may do more of the chart memory work with her because I don't think that it's going to come as easy to her as it did for my son. Uh, the other thing is in here for every week, there are sentences in here for them, like for them to practice. There's analytical tasks, uh, things that they have to do and sentences that they have to diagram out. But I didn't use this. Like I didn't use anything out of this book other than taking out the week that we needed and putting it in my son's binder so that he could follow along during the uh, tutoring session on Fridays at community day. But other than that, when we were at home, we did not touch this. So what I did end up doing was I got um, the membership to CC Connected and I just printed off all of the work printables on there for each week. And on there you have like your IEW vocabulary words, uh, spelling words, and they have different activities with crossword puzzles and like different things like that for you to do. There's uh, the history sentence for the week from foundations that you can go on there and you can edit. Uh, so he would do that. And then there are, I, I don't know if they're the same sentences as in here or if they're different ones, but there are sentences on CC Connected on those printables that you can diagram out that way. And that was totally fine for my son. So um, I mentioned in another video that I was putting my younger two in, um, switching their language arts over to The Good and the Beautiful. And so even though my nine-year-old is going into this, I think that if we start um, The Good and the Beautiful sooner than we start CC in the fall, then she can get like some practice in doing all of that. And then it won't, like this won't be so overwhelming to her because she's not really quite prepared for this yet um, but we got it we'll get her there and I think she'll do fine um, if she ends up catching on really quickly I can always just like put the, the good and the beautiful to the side and do the CC connected pages for her like I'm doing with my son uh, I feel like our first few years are just all kind of trial and error of figuring out of figuring out what works for us what doesn't and then also trying to figure out what works for each individual child that I have so the other side of um 
or the other part to essentials is the writing component. So this essentials guide is like the language arts grammar component and then there's a separate writing component which is IEW. And this is the uh, structure and style teaching writing and this is my, um, my teaching workbook so you can purchase this separately. And what I really like about it, and I have a full a full review on IEW that I'll link in the bottom because I actually show um, the majority of this, if not all of this, in there. But each unit that you're going to be doing in uh, in your C or each unit that you're going to be doing for essentials is in here and it's tabbed off. And so you can go in here and it tells you like just what you need to know, what the like what you need to know as far as the goals, recommended text that you can pair with it. So that will be their literature component next year. I found, like, I saw this late in the game um, after I had already purchased all sorts of other books. And then at this, in the second half of the year, I just started pairing my son's literature with what um, IEW, with the, I, with the IEW uh, units. So I think I'm going to do that for both of them this year. And it gives you, like, uh, different levels. So, like, there's a, a reader for boys or girls like what would be more interesting to a boy or a girl or if it's pretty neutral and then also like their age range because so essentials is 9 to 11 12 ish um and so there's different like if a book is better for a nine year old but not so much for your 11 12 year old um it there's different levels of books that you can choose also so i think that's what i'm going to do for their reading this year is just pairing it with their um IEW units and this year is going to be ancient history so I don't have that yet I'm waiting for them to get the essentials guide in to purchase all of my cycle one material so I don't have any of that stuff in yet but I will be sure to share with you guys um, what all I purchase whenever I do finally do that and I get it in so yes the um, next part of essentials is IEW for writing absolutely love it um, if you do choose to use Essentials, or if you do choose to use IEW, whether it's a part of Essentials or on your own, definitely check out the um, the IEW like teacher trainings because those are so helpful. And each and there's teacher trainings on each and every unit. So I did the trainings with my um, community. We just met at the director's house or the tutor's house and watch the DVDs all together and so that was really nice because we could talk about it with each other um, and compare notes and see what other people to like what their perspective was that they took from it and really just kind of collaborate on how to best teach our kids and then also to see like the strengths and weaknesses of each kid for every mom and like collaborate on how to help them um, bring out their strengths but also improve their weaknesses so that was really good so any of the like parent trainings or practicums or anything like that that you can join definitely do definitely do that because they're so helpful um over the summer when i after i decided to um, go ahead and apply for cc i also went to the um the practicum and that was super helpful especially being brand new going into all of this it was so helpful to teach me about the classical um teaching approach and CC specifically with like the different areas and how it works and why it works. So if you can attend a practicum, if you're still not sold on doing CC, definitely do a practicum. Do like an informational a practicum before you make up your mind about doing it or not doing it. So um, those are the components that we used and like I said, I was going to let you know how we enjoyed CC and if it was something that we were going to continue on with. We all really did enjoy CC. Um, the the drive to where we had to go was probably my only issue, and that's being fixed this year because we're going to be able to move back to a church closer to where all of us live, and it'll be like a two minute drive versus a 40 minute drive. So that was really my only thing. Um, I feel like CC brought in a component into our lives that for homeschooling that I, I thought that my kids would miss out on with like the, the science, the science experiments, music and art, but also like the connection with friends and, uh, our particular TC community was so welcoming and so, um, amazing. Like they made it so easy for us to, um, join in with them as new homeschoolers and to like feel accepted and welcomed and, uh, 
it it really made myself and my kids feel like we've known these people and like we've been doing this with them for years because they were just so welcoming and so good to us. Um, so we had an amazing first year of CC and we are definitely, definitely going to be doing it again next year. Um, I will have two kiddos in essentials and then my three kiddos will still all be in foundations. Uh, my oldest son, this will be his last year in essentials, so he only gets two years of essentials, and then he'll be moving up to challenge, and that's where, or challenge A, and that's kind of where I've been more um, on the, like, on the fence about continuing. I know that I'm going to stick it out with all of my kids going through foundations and essentials, um, I've, and I'm getting closer and closer to being sold on uh, challenge A and putting my kids through CC middle school. And then I think that it'll be a whole new thing of like being on the fence of continuing CC through high school. So I, I'm just going to take it all year by year and just see where we're at, how we're doing, and how things are looking before we um, make that ultimate decision of continuing for each one of those things. But I personally would highly recommend um, you checking out your local CC uh, Classical Conversations community and just seeing if it's something that will work for your family. Uh, even if you're not interested in the classical approach or you're not sure about the classical approach, uh, check out an informational and a practicum and see if that is something, like after you take in all of that information, then see if it's something that you would be willing to pursue with your kiddos. And yeah, so that's all that I have for you guys today. We, like I already mentioned, we really, really enjoyed and loved our first year of CC. We're excited to continue on next year. And um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And also, if you aren't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit subscribe. I love to have you here as a part of my community. And also, don't forget, if you aren't already following me on Instagram, head over there right now and go follow among.stout. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.